I went out to LA to Snoop Studio, did a whole album damn near. That's 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 um, uh, you know what I mean? And it was we did it in like a few days. Nice. And that was that. We shot a shot like maybe one or two videos, and then I never I didn't hear nothing else about it. You know what I mean? What's up everybody? My name is Mackenzie. I'm the associate editor at Double XL magazine, and I'm here with a household name at this point, another certified legend and a New York veteran. I'm here with Dave East. How's it going, man? Everything is great, bro. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you too. Uh take me through the collab run that you've been on recently. You got albums with Crutch Calhoun, Scram Jones, and I got Mike and Keys. As a newly independent artist, I'm curious what role collaboration is playing for you at this point in your career. Um, I, I don't really put no like real thought behind it. It's like um, not a lot of the times the people I'm collabing with is really like people I really um have real relationships with, mm -hmm. um be, beyond the music. So it really just it happens to happen that way. Me and Crutch been locked in over a decade. Um, this is actually me and Mike and Key's second full full length project. Um, Scram Jones actually did one of my first mixtapes ever back in the day, um, straight out of Harlem. So then me and him was able to revisit me and him working and we did the For the Love project. But I think now for me, it's just the, the freedom of being able to work how I want to work and, and put the music out. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that, man. You just left Def Jam. What kind of inspired you to kind of take the independent route? Um, Just to, just to, just something new, something fresh. I feel like I, I, I came in the game with Nas. I was with Mass and Pale for a few, and then I, I I went over to Def Jam, um, and I've been over there. Then my daughter just turned eight. I've been over there like her whole life, you know what I mean? So I just feel like it's something. It, I just I, I I'm a very creative person, and um, not not knocking the label or nothing like that, but I think it kind of um puts a puts a a, a a border on my creativity, you know what I mean? But but now being independent, I feel like you're going to really get to see more from me and just really how my mind worked musically. What are some challenges you've had to navigate uh, as an independent artist now that you didn't have to navigate before when you were signed to a label? Really nothing to be honest with you that I've seen because I think I really got my my base and my, my following during the years of me being on a major label. So it's like, it's I don't really feel like there's no difference. You know what I mean? Maybe it's not the... Uh, I don't know. I don't really. I don't really see no difference in it. To be honest with you, I don't. I know I don't have to get a a thousand different opinions on one song. You know what I mean? I don't have to sit in a room with a hundred people and they all people that really. I mean, some of them may care about the music, some may not. Now I feel like I'm more in a situation where everybody involved really cares about the music and really wants to see it. You know, go as far as it can go. Yeah. So take me through the album, man. Take me through Apartment Sixty. How did this project come together and? What was how did you approach this project differently than from past projects? Um, six. Yeah, I think this was a long time coming for this project. I've been speaking about it for a few years now, but um, that's the apartment I was living in. I I, I basically kind of um, I wouldn't say grew up in that apartment, but I was there all my life, going back and forth. My aunt lived in that apartment, and um, she passed two thousand eight. So after she passed, I moved in that apartment with my cousin. And that's where, um, I think that's really where life changed for me. That's where the music, that's where I, I was playing ball going into that apartment. Then I then after that, I wasn't playing ball no more. So I really was able to put all my time into the music. Um, and that's where I got my first deal out of that apartment. I signed, when Nas signed me, I, I caught the train to Matthew Pill, um, downtown. Then I caught the train back to Queens and I walked to that apartment with my deal in my hand. So that apartment just, it's a lot of memories. We, we we used to have family reunions in there. Um, a lot of family members I can remember that have passed on. They was in that apartment. So I just feel like um, it means a lot to my family, um, that, that specific apartment. And to people that know me from that time period of trying to get my name out to the world for rap, they they, they definitely remember that apartment. So that's that's what really made me want to name it that. And then just to get back in with Mike and Keys was was a beautiful thing because I feel like with the um how did I get here project that was that was so smooth and just a uh, uh nothing was forced uh, those are my guys like you know what I mean that's that's family that's that's like a real home base type of production team for me I met them through Nipsey God bless his soul and ever since since I locked in with them we've had the same same type of um type of bond you know what I mean we've traveled out the country. We we've just been locked in, so I knew that music would come. It it wouldn't be like a um a forced thing, or it wouldn't be hard, or just wouldn't be difficult to put together.
Yeah, and I want to talk about the song uh, specifically So Much Change because you you guys flipped uh, Tupac's 1994 song Pain. And I'm curious, how did you feel approaching such a legendary sample? What kind of energy did you bring to the track when you hopped on it? That's one of my favorite songs ever. I'm a, I'm a diehard Tupac fan. I got Tupac tatted on my leg. So that's that, that and that's from um that's from Above the Rim. That's one of my favorite movies ever. So that was like a basketball movie um in the nineties, and then it, and then Tupac was starring in it. So that's a song that I've always loved. That record, I always loved that beat. Um, I, I've been telling different producers over the years, yo, flip that pain beat, flip that pain beat. And Mike and Keys did that shit perfect, where it sounds up to date. It sounds like what's going on now but if you're a fan of that music or if you if you're familiar with that Tupac record you can hear it you know what I mean yeah how did it feel finally getting on and being able to get on a song like that oh that was dope man that's why even if you listen to the second verse I I, I kind of tried to channel box flow and all of that you know what I mean I'm asking, yeah yeah it was really just, it, it was a old, it was an old to Tupac I feel like Pac is one of them dudes if I'd have been around in that era, you know what I mean? Or if he would have still been here in this era, I think he would have respected what I was doing and saluted, you know what I mean, how I moved. So I just wanted to kind of pay homage to Tupac on that one. Then my girl Stacy killed the hook with the melodies. You know what I mean? It's just a, yeah. it's a, it's a good, it ain't, the, it ain't, it ain't the Pac version, but it's a, it's a good flip. And so much has changed for you uh, over the course of your career. I mean, growing up and getting signed on Parmix 60 and all that stuff. Um, I'm curious since, this album, you were clearly in a reflective sort of state of mind. Looking back, what's one of the challenge? What's what were one of the unexpected challenges you faced as a young rapper coming up, and how did you navigate that? And yeah, are you are you happy with where you're at now? Yeah, I think early on, I was really trying to um my my, my thing was acceptance and trying to get everybody to fuck with me. And this one, you know, what I mean, I wanted features from everybody, and you know, what I mean, it's just the, I think it was just me being excited knowing that I could do these things. I can get Nas on a song. I can get Snoop on a song. I can, you know what I mean? Because I grew up to all of these people. But I think over the years, I've realized that um, I'm, I'm my own artist. I'm my own. I have my own fan base. I have my own following of people that really love what I do, minus the features, minus the connections, minus the relationships that I have. You know what I mean? So just, I've just been more on that, just trying to make the best music that, I, that me, Dave, that I can make myself, you know what I mean, without relying on a feature or relying on a on a collab. And and they're dope because, like I said, features always, to me, is dope because you're kind of merging the fan bases, you know what I mean? So I'm if, like, like I got to drink with Shaggy. I'm sure Shaggy fan bases, you know what I mean, like out yeah. of this world. So just to be able to tap into that a little bit, you know what I mean, for – a diehard Shaggy fan to be like, Ooh, what's this Dave East record? You know what I mean? Just to get that. For me, that's dope. But over the years, I really just just realized, like, um, that's not what makes or breaks an artist who he works with. You know what I mean? It's really about the growth in the music. Um, How do I apply my life to the music? Can the fans, the supporters, can they see growth in me? Can they hear growth in my, you know what I mean? All those type of things are, are more important to me now. And you've had a really consistent career both in music as well as branching out into acting. Um, I'm curious, at what point in your career did that mentality change? Did it become more about the consistency rather than the big name collapse and stuff like that that you were saying? Um, I would say maybe, maybe like around uh, like Karma 3, around like maybe around that time. Mm -hmm. um, I started just realizing that like I didn't travel the world, I didn't sold out shows, London, Paris, everywhere, like, so to, to really realize, like, that was me doing that, and that wasn't, like, none of those shows that I have to feature, you know what I mean, to pop out and perform with me and no shit like that, so it just kind of registered in my mind, like, damn, this is, um, this is really your doings, this is your work, this is it's your music that they're liking, so I just, just been trying to, you know, focus more on that, focus on uh, the production, instead of working with a million different producers, you know what I mean, lock in with one or two and really and really master that sound, you know what I mean, and and, and get the, the best sound we could get out of that. So it, it's just, I think it just comes with growth and just me navigating through this game and seeing what works for me. For sure. I just want to touch on Shaggy for one second because I think you brought up a really good point about it. It, it, it seems unexpected to have Shaggy on a Davies song. How did you connect with Shaggy and 
how did you know that he was the right fit for that song? Um, well, I, I'm I'm West Indian. I got West Indian. My father's Bayesian, you know what I mean? So I've always been in tune with reggae and, you know what I mean, all, all my life. Um, I did a, I did a record with Popcon a couple years ago. We went out to Jamaica. I locked in with him, the um the Unruly record. So I feel like um a lot of my favorite rap, Biggie, all of them, they always was throwing some type of reggae and they somewhere in they in their music. And I feel like that's like almost like a loss. That's almost like you don't really hear that too much no more. Like rappers and reggae artists really collabing. Um, so that's that was one of them things where I was like, damn, I, I got one with Popcon. Who else can we? Who else um, that I that I've spoke with that I have some type of relationship with? Who else would be dope on this? Because as soon as I heard the beat, it took me right to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, nah, we gotta let's let's see. You know what I mean? That was one of them like uh like a we was hoping that 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 came through and it, it came all the way through. Shaggy Love the record. He sent me he sent me maybe two or three different versions when he sent it back. So that let me know he was really fucking with it. You know what I mean? So that was a, that was that was heavy for me. Because like I said, I grew up listening to Shaggy all my life. And you're connected with a lot of New York rappers too. I know that you know you're really close with Mayno, Jim Jones, Fab. What's it? It seems important for you to kind of establish and maintain these relationships uh, with with your colleagues and with rappers. Tell me about the role that relationships play in your career so far. I, I fuck with who fuck with me, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just keep it <laughs> straight like that. Like over yeah. the years, you realize. Some people, some people uh, gravitate towards you because of uh, your, your, who you are, or your some of your style, or if you if you hot, you know what I mean. If everybody's talking about you, you got people that are just trying to get next to you for that. Then you got people that 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 really truly fuck with you and and ask you about your kids and you know what I mean. Care about you as a person beyond the music. I feel like we all doing this music shit. So so what 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 separate? One one artist from another, and to me, as far as friendship going rap, it's about who really who really fuck with you, who really not just there for the highs or when you lit or when you were on. You know what I mean? When you at the award shows and all that. A lot of people that I thought I was super close with at them times when I first came out and I was super hot and everybody was. You know what I mean? A lot of that shit died out. You know what I mean? A lot of them relationships died out because it wasn't nothing real to begin with. It was just somebody trying to get next to what was hot or the next best thing or whatever they thought they whatever they thought was the next best thing they'd be trying to get next to it so over the years i got to realize who really fuck with me for me you know what i mean so that's probably why you, that's why you see me with who you see me with and you won't gonna... see me and you won't see me with certain people no more like you know what i mean that's all that is yeah i was gonna say are, are you guys still hitting the gym together the summer's yeah, coming we, yeah we locked in man man me and jim for sure i, I know fab fab and Mano been they be running around and shit like that, but me and me and I didn't see Jim in there the last last couple of weeks. I've been bumping into him. Nice man. Um, tell me a bit about your acting in recent years too. Have you connected with Meth Method Man since starring as him in Wu Tang American Saga? I'm yeah, curious. hell yeah, 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 yeah. Me and Meth, that's my dog. I'm curious what you are about the show and about your portrayal of him. He loved it. He really saluted saluted everything, man. Like I actually, my last tour, the let the um the final show was at the Apollo Theater. And I brought Meth out, you know what I mean? And he he basically explained it to the crowd, like, you know what I mean? I really salute this guy and his portrayal of me. So that's all, to me, that was the biggest uh, stamp I could get. I didn't really care how nobody else felt, as long as, you know what I mean, the guy I was actually portraying, and he's still alive to see it. A lot of times when people do films, portraying somebody as somebody that might have passed on, you know what I mean? Sure. So for, to really get his critique, he's hitting real time was dope. You know what I mean? But Mef, me and Mef, super cool. He's another one of them people that uh, he didn't come and go in my career. You know what I mean? He, since he came in my life, we've been, we've been. I could, I could get with Mef when I need to get with Mef. You know what I mean? It's really interesting that you brought that up because it's true. I feel like when rappers or, or whoever are starring as uh, people in these biopics, you know, usually a lot of the time they're deceased or they're they're no longer with us. Uh, when you were approaching Method Man's character. Were you talking to him about his manner? Were you just studying his mannerisms? Were you talking to him and showing him like, hey, this is what I'm thinking for your character? Like, how do you approach playing someone else that is very much, like you said, a part of your life without- you um, know, with, with that, it was, I had a convo with him and he basically was telling me uh, to, to to do me. He said, of course, they, they got you portraying me, but you're the actor. So do it, do it, do it your way. 
And I grew up on meth. I kind of already had the swag down pat. And you know what I mean? Like the lingo, all of that shit. So it really was just me like going on YouTube. Um, watching old Wu Tang interviews and shit, like how Meth would talk in the interview, how this is facial, like just a lot of that. Cause the Meth that I personally know ain't the Method Man that I was playing. You know what I mean? Like the Meth I met in real life is is a grown, is older. Oh, you know what I mean? He's, he's, a, he's a straight he's a straight actor. He acted and shit. So that's the Meth I met. But the Meth I'm portraying is from like '93, '92. Yeah, that was a whole other Meth. So I had to really. YouTube, YouTube was my best friend for that, you know what I mean? Because, like I said, with Meth, I'm calling, talking to him, but he like, man, with however you reading that script, however you see it, put your shit, put your twist to it and do it like that. So that was his thing. But for me to really nail it, like I feel like I nailed it, YouTube. I was watching mad interviews, uh, even old performances. Like if you could go on YouTube and check out like Meth performing in 94 and shit like that. So I was just, I really just wanted to get down his body language, his energy, because I knew um, vocally my voice and just, I could, I could do that easily, you know what I mean? But it was more the body movements and you know, just how he, well, he was a younger dude at that time. So I was really just trying to nail that. What are your thoughts on uh, New York rap right now? And kind of where there's a lot of different sounds coming out of different boroughs. I'm curious how you feel about all of it. I think it's young right now. I, I, I love it. I think, I think the youth. The youth is doing their thing in New York City right now. You know what I mean? Of course, the legends that been around, they still, still, still rocking and rolling. But I think, I think it's a, it's a, it's like basketball. This shit is a young man's sport, young woman's sport. Like you know what I mean? And I feel like, um, a lot more females just coming out rapping. Uh, and and I just I don't know. I don't. I, I wouldn't say I'm the biggest biggest fan of all of the drill, but I respect the drill. I respect the movement of the drill. Um, I respect the energy of this drill, and I respect the fact that it is giving a lot of them kids in them in them hoods, you know what I mean, something to do, you know what I mean, or something extracurricular to try to do or try to get into. But I'm a fan of New York rap right now. All of the like, I, like I said, it's mad young, from Chef G to Ice Spice, all, all of that to me is New York City right now. It's young, you know what I mean, and I feel like the 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 the, the younger crowd understands it more than my crowd. You know what I mean? But I, I, I'm i a fan of all of it. Listen to any uh, Cash Cobain, Fisher, stuff like that? You all that shit is, all that's fire. All bass swag, that's my that's my, my youngin'. Like, all of that's fire to me because they got a wave. You get what I'm saying? Like, when you see the whole club saying that shit word for word, the women, the do everybody, they got a wave. So I, I, I would be a I would be a sucker to, to, to hate on any of it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like it. I salute it. That was interesting what you brought up about the drill movement. Cause I'm, I was going to ask about your opinion on like kind of the controversy that politicians are making about drill music in general. And I guess what are your thoughts on the controversy behind the drill movement right now? I don't think it's no con. They did the same shit with NWA. Yeah. They did the same shit with so many countless different uh, groups or, you know what I mean? They just try to, they try to separate um, the culture. They're trying to break the culture down into different, like when you think of rock and roll, it's just rock and roll. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got heavy metal, you got all, you got different types, but when they talk about it, it's rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Country music is just country music. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop, they break it down to gangster, gangster hip hop, gangster rap, drill, da, da, da. And I think that's that's whack, because it's all hip hop. It's all, it all falls under the umbrella of the culture. You know what I mean? And the, and the politicians, I just seen Trump just had Chef G in them at, at one of the rallies, you know what I mean? So they, they, they definitely know our our uh, our impact, you know what I mean, and what we mean to the to the to the world, you know what I mean? But like I said, they did the same shit with NWA. That was what 30, 40 years ago when I was a baby, they was doing that with NWA. So that's just history always repeat itself, you know what I mean? Do you think that there's a, a lack of collaboration going on between because like you said, everyone's kind of the, the kids are all kind of separate. There's like the drill stuff going on in the Bronx and stuff. Then you got the sexy drill movement. And you're a guy who, like you said, you're very like connected with the people that you're connected with and you're very big on collaboration. Do you feel that there's a lack of collaboration going on with the younger kids in hip hop right now? I wouldn't say too. I mean, it depends on the artist. I know Meek Mill, he, he, he worked with a lot of the younger people. He reached back and, and do a lot of shit with younger artists. Um, there's a few there's a few different artists that do that. I know Jim do it. Jim do it all the time. He worked with younger artists. Um, I think it's more of, of the personalities in the in the in the in the youth and the and and the older dudes. You know what I'm saying? When I was young, 
when I was a younger artist coming in here, I wanted to work with everybody. Like, you know what I'm saying? That was my thing. Like, I didn't want to come in the game, like, with a with an attitude or with a, like, you know what I mean? Like, nah, I ain't fucking with people. I wanted to come in the game and, and be able to work with whoever I wanted to work with. Now, over time, I realized you can't really do that. You know what I mean? You can, but it ain't. It ain't really the thing to do, but I feel like um, it's more of a, just a link up. I feel like a lot of the older dudes may look at that scene like, ah, oh, that's the younger scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the young dudes might look at us like, ah, oh, them niggas is old. Like, you know what I mean? So I think with a lot of that going on and nobody really kicking it, talking, and, and having them studio sessions and shit, I think a lot more collaborations will come out. Yeah, got to bridge that gap. For sure. Yeah, a lot of that, that music is dope. The production is dope. The topics they talking about, a lot of that shit is dope. It's just about, you know, bringing it together. Yeah. Speaking of a collab album, whatever happened that joint album with you and Snoop Dogg? I was hearing all this all this stuff about it. and Yeah, man. We we actually damn near finished it. Um, I think that was a dev, some Dev Jam shit, honestly. I think they uh kind of got in that, got in the mix of that, and, and it, it never it never seen the light of day. But yeah, I went out to L.A. to Snoop Studio. Did a whole album damn near. That's 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 um, you know what I mean? And it was we did it in like a few days. Nice. And that was that. We shot a shot like maybe one or two videos, and then I never I didn't hear nothing else about it, you know what I mean? Yeah, is there any chance that that sees the light of day or yeah, I gotta probably just get next to Snoop, you know what I mean? And we'd be like, what we doing with that music? It probably definitely can now with me being independent, you know what I'm saying? For mm -hmm. sure, for sure. I, that 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 has to come out. That's legendary. Yeah. Um, we're get, uh, kind of on a separate topic. We're getting into a uh, freshman season over at Double XL, and uh, I gotta say, your class, the 2016 class, is the most googled, the most talked about, the most respected class out of all of them. Um, kind of looking back at that time, you know, did you realize that you were part of such a legendary moment when you were in it? Nah, not at the moment. But I knew I was a part of something that was dope because. I was already following that shit. Like I was already a fan of like the previous freshman list and shit. I was like, damn, I wonder how I always, but I always thought it was like, I don't know. I always thought it was rigged. Like, man, them niggas know somebody or they, you know what I mean? I always thought okay, that. Man. I'm like, ain't no way I yeah. can. I'm living in the projects, reading the magazine. I'm like, I can't make no shit like this. So for me to be on that and then to see everybody else on that career do what it do from 21 to Uzi to mm -hmm. D Herbo to Anderson Pat, all of them, like everybody, I feel like, our class all kind of did our thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, after the fact, like, you know what I mean? Everybody still is relevant in their own way, you know what I mean? Some went further than others, but I feel like we all relevant in our own way. Out of all the classes, that one is constantly Googled, talk, those ciphers are just going up and up in views on YouTube. It's it's crazy. Yeah, that was dope. That was, a, that was a dope experience for me, man. And it, I feel like it put me in a space where it's like almost like... Uh, like the elite, the the hip, like that's like hip hop royalty or like a, a sorority. Like everybody don't get to be a part of that that yeah. double like sales freshman list. You know what I'm saying? Right. But that's yeah, that's dope. Um, is there anyone that you want to see in the freshman class this year? Any young rappers that you want to shout out that hopefully we pick? Um, uh, Core. I don't I don't know if he made it before, and I don't know if Core made it yet. But Core from Philly. Okay. Core is fire. I fuck with Core. Me and him did it. Me and him been locked in for years. We did a mixtape back in a few years ago. But I really, I really, uh, I really respect what he got going on and how he 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 humble with it. I, I respect the humble people with it. You know what I mean? Where you 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 know you wanted you know you nice, but you know what I mean you ain't gotta you ain't gotta scream that shit. You know what I mean? So I would I would say Core out of Philly. Well, in closing, man, there's one more thing I gotta ask you about, and that's the Kendrick and Drake beef. Uh, are you following it? Are you following it? What are your thoughts on it? How are, you, how are you feeling about it? I think it was good for hip hop, man. I think it was. I think uh, it was good to see them come out of their shell like that a little bit. Like I feel like Drake been kind of getting getting uh, attacked, and he's 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 been giving us those responses. But um, it was dope to see Kendrick come out of his shell like that. You know what I mean? I think it was. Uh, it was to me. I, it was funny to me, like. I know it got it, it sounded like it got real personal, but um just for me, I'm all the way on the outside looking at it was dope for hip hop, you know what I mean? Just to see the the um the attention shift to hip hop. Like, you know what I mean? That's all everybody was talking about. Yo, Kendrick dropped another response, yo, Drake response. So just to see that hip hop can still 
snatch that much. Like, you know what I mean? It can snatch that many people attention. They playing that shit on the playoffs and all. Like they got, I heard a kid's bop rendition of the night like uh, it's, it's, you get what I'm saying? It's crazy. So like I said, I think it was dope for hip hop, man. Nobody yeah. got no, it wasn't no, it didn't go as far as the Tupac and Biggie, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think I think it was dope. I think it was dope for hip hop. So you team Drake or Team Kendrick? Uh I ain't on no team. <laughs> no more <laughs> <I'm> Team East. <laughs> Hell yeah. Team East. Love it.